At Mach 25, there is no forgiveness, only the steady reduction of design assumptions to equations. The essential problem of atmospheric reentry is a matter of velocity meeting density, a physical transaction where the kinetic energy of a spacecraft is violently converted into thermal energy, resulting in temperatures that exceed 1,400 degrees seared on the vehicle's surface. For six decades, humanity's solution to this physical law was based on a principle of sacrifice. Every thermal protection system, from the earliest mercury capsules to modern orbital vehicles, was designed to burn away, absorbing heat through the calculated predictable destruction of its own mass. This transaction was reliable, but for a vehicle like Starship, intended to fly every few days, the requirement of reusability without loss inverted the problem entirely. Survival could no longer be a consequence of consumable mass. It had to be a function of active control. The engineering challenge moved from material endurance to the dynamic management of energy, necessitating a radical shift to transpiration cooling, a system designed to defy the physics of sacrifice by having the vehicle breathe coolant gas through its skin. The vehicle's hull, a 120-ton cylinder of stainless steel, was required to simultaneously endure the deep space cold of internal cryogenic propellant and atmospheric heating reaching 1,700 degrees salt on its exterior. To achieve this impossible duality, engineers turned to 3D printed silicon carbide composites, materials selected for their ceramic heat resistance and the precise manufacturing control that allowed the creation of microscopic pores between 10 and 20 micrometers in diameter. This porosity was the core mechanism, an invisible boundary layer formed by the exiting gas, designed to separate the superheated plasma sheath from the solid structure itself, cutting the thermal flux by up to 90% if the flow remained perfectly stable. Initial trials, however, confirmed that the environment resists imposed uniformity, immediately exposing a fundamental vulnerability known as asymmetric flow depletion. When one section of the test article, such as the nose cone, heated faster than its neighboring surface, Surfaces, the coolant gas began to escape preferentially through that hotter region, acting as a natural vent, but simultaneously starving the adjacent cooler sections. This seemingly self-regulating behavior became self-defeating, generating wall temperature gradients that reached a 280 degree sick difference within two seconds. The system survived that initial exposure only because the test was curtailed early, a near-miss quantified precisely in seconds and degrees that exposed the central structural contradiction. Cooling was not a static material property, but a continuous, delicate rhythm that demanded perfect harmony with an unpredictable thermal load. The deeper insight was that the solution's dependency on continuous real-time fidelity created a new order of risk. Operating at Mach 25 and altitudes around 60 kilometers, the surrounding plasma sheath saturates the atmosphere with scattered electrons, which interferes with radio waves and subjects circuitry to intense heat making the required precise sensor feedback inherently uncertain. Without exact data, the active cooling system was forced to operate on a set of pre-programmed assumptions, yet in the environment of hypersonic re-entry, every assumption is a potential debt that physics will inevitably collect. This systemic fragility was confirmed in a later prototype where stable cooling held for 48 seconds until a nominal coolant pressure drop of just 0.2 bar was enough to thin the protective gas layer on the windward side. Infrared sensors recorded an immediate spike to 1,480 degree detraxin, causing the underlying structure to warp permanently, a demonstration that the margin between survival and structural failure was less than one PSI. 
Post-flight data confirmed the root cause was not a flaw in the hardware, but a mathematical miscalculation in the simulation used to predict flow uniformity across the vehicle's curved surfaces. Initial models had incorrectly assumed constant gas viscosity and an isotropic pore distribution. During actual re-entry, however, the plasma interaction altered the gas density by up to 30% based on local ionization levels. This meant the mechanism designed for self-regulation became a catalyst for depletion. Hot spots consumed the available gas faster, while stable areas conserved a supply that was critically needed elsewhere. This asymmetrical consumption eventually drove internal flow channels to negative pressure, a condition so severe that the plasma itself was pulled into microcracks in the hull. The vehicle, in its attempt to breathe coolant to survive, began to paradoxically inhale the fire it was designed to repel, demonstrating the universe's resistance to impose technological uniformity and confirming that entropy patiently judges all designs. The practical necessity of minimizing coolant depletion forced a major engineering compromise. The design retreated from total active control to a hybrid system. Pore density was reduced by 40%, and ceramic tile reinforcement was reintroduced in critical thermal zones. This was a pragmatic blend of old and new doctrines, a partial surrender of the ambitious goal. However, this shift merely traded one set of constraints for another. The loss of ablative mass had been a predictable, slow destruction. The reliance on the hybrid system substituted that for an instant, unforgiving failure dictated by a single dependency on active system reliability. The trade was complete. Technological reuse now required a tolerance for catastrophic, instantaneous failure that had no parallel in previous designs. Further high-speed acoustic testing revealed a hidden mechanism that threatened the entire structural architecture. A panel failed catastrophically at Mach 7, not due to thermal erosion or melting, but because engineers had optimized its permeability for fluid cooling without considering mechanical resonance. Under the intense acoustic loads of the hypersonic boundary layer, the porosity itself acted as a silent amplifier, concentrating high-frequency oscillations along the weakest flow paths. The panel fractured from within at a 3.1 quartz vibration frequency caused by a fluid structure resonance where the minute pulsations of the coolant flow coupled perfectly with the shell's natural harmonic mode. The same property that protected the structure from heat was capable of destroying it structurally. The resolution demanded a change in the fundamental geometry of the structure. The pores were redesigned from cylindrical to conical, a modification that successfully disrupted the acoustic coupling. This established a new philosophy of passive active hybridity, where the skin derived its strength not from rigid mass, but from controlled permeability. Yet this precision came at the cost of redundancy. The quantified limits of the material defined an extremely narrow operational zone for structural viability. If porosity rises above 15%, the mechanical strength drops below 150 MPa. The inherent fragility of this precise system was dramatically demonstrated by tests showing complete structural loss only 1.6 seconds after coolant interruption. The required flawless coordination between chemistry, heat, and flow meant that the margin for error was reduced to milliseconds. This achievement in thermal management thus redefines endurance, but it also guarantees that every microscopic imperfection, every pore partially clogged, every tile weakened by thermal cycling accumulates silently. Reusability carries memory. 
The material retains the record of stress and flow, turning the data from each successful re-entry into both proof of concept and a continuous record of decay. The system is designed to manage flow instability, but that task is now passed to control software updating every 50 milliseconds. This speed only amplifies the risk of latent failures. A sensor glitch could now instantaneously overcool or overheat a section, initiating a terminal chain reaction invisible until it became catastrophic. The ultimate challenge is not to eliminate this structural boundary, but to recognize that the spacecraft's survival hinges on its ability to yield just enough to outlast the heat. Transpiration cooling has shifted the focus from consumable materials to the management of flow system instability and the quiet accumulation of micro damage. Success will manifest not as an explosion, but as a silent, quantifiable data anomaly. The laws of physics remain constant, indifferent to innovation. And as the vehicle falls back through the atmosphere, the final verdict belongs not to engineers or algorithms, but to the constant, indifferent arithmetic of physics.